All right, let's get this over with. This is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. As much as I've been ranting and raving about Nessai Impeller being the perfect match and it's going to make a ton of power with this, this uh, electric Vortec project, you know, I got it, I got the thing delivered. It's here. We put it on and it dropped in. It was It's a work of art, obviously. I took it for a spin and then I even gave it another shot. And at the end of the day, it's not worth that much more power. And it's through no fault of the impeller or the volume. Like I said, the thing is a work of art, and there's no doubt that it's actually a huge improvement over the SC trim. It's just there's a very obvious reason that is obvious on the surface, but you don't really know if that's what it is until somebody tests it. And as far as I know, nobody's actually tested the idea, but we did. And what I'm talking about here primarily is how much energy does it take to drive a compressor versus the work you get out of it versus the efficiency of the compressor? What does all that mean? Basically, it means because we were putting a certain amount of work or wattage into the system, we were only able to get a certain amount of work out of the system with the only difference being the gain in efficiency from the better impeller. The only reason why there was actually a gain was because the impeller from uh, John Bond Performance, which, you know, again, not sponsored. I paid for that thing because it's, it, it, you know, ticked all the right boxes. But, and, and that showed actually, because we did pick up about 20 horsepower. What's weird is we did see, you know, like peak boost of 4.2 PSI, like actually during a pull, which we hadn't seen before. And we did actually see a higher, uh, duty cycle, which, you know, if you take into account the brake specific fuel consumption, you can actually calculate approximately how much horsepower you gained, and we gained approximately 20 horsepower. But remember, at the end of the day, we're still putting the same amount of work into the system as the system is delivering in terms of compressed air and flow. So having said that, okay, now what? And why did you spend that money? Well, even though we're, we're kind of limited now, if you look at the compressor maps, and I'll, you know, watch the other compressor map video, I'm not going to bore you with that, but the SC trim was less efficient, considerably less efficient. It was somewhere around the 60% efficiency island, whereas the SI trim was giving us at least 72. Uh, and the fact that this is a, a billet impeller, it was probably even more than that, probably more like 75. So we were seeing actually an improvement of uh like i said roughly 20 horsepower so that's fine and all but where do we go from here well <laughs> it ain't over yet in fact it's not even close so remember how we started out with these z z 6000 milliamp hour batteries right so they're 60 c they're they're c rating in other words their peak discharge is not as high as the new ones and of course the new ones are 9000 milliamp hours and i shortened the connectors so minimize the the length of 10 gauge wire but we were still consistently getting a lot of voltage drop so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually take uh these batteries and by the way i just happened to pull the first one off the stack this is actually a 3s so it has three cells what we had if you remember when we first started we had basically this 15s 15 cells because these are all four cell batteries except for this one which is a three cell batteries battery rather <clears throat> when we went to the bigger batteries we also went with 16s might as well because when we measured the voltage the voltage drop was enough where we still weren't over volting either the esc or the motor well now we have bigger batteries already in function and if we take this 3s pack and swap it out with another 4s pack which has the wrong kind of connector it's what they happen to have in stock no big deal because we'll just put an ec5 connector on it if we put four of these together in series and put those, so we get basically effectively one large battery and put this battery then in parallel with the existing battery, we should see substantially less voltage drop, which means more power to the motor, which means hopefully more RPM. And of course we do have that new TP power motor coming up. That's, you know, considerably more powerful. And as one commenter pointed out, and thank you for the link. There is a German company that makes 40 kilowatt motors uh, with a 50,000 RPM peak. So, you know, it ain't over till it's over. Subscribe. Oh, wait, I'm
Oh, 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 oh,